I want to ask you today, what are you looking for? Guys, my name is Nick Vujicic. I was born in Australia in 1982, moved from Australia to California in the year 2006. And uh, my life story, um, I'm just thankful that people has, have, have seen my life on some sort of level, whether it's just YouTube videos or seeing uh, pictures of a limbless guy smile. Um, you know, people always ask me, you know, what happened to you and, and how did you overcome uh, what you've been through. Um, the title of the message that I've been given is uh, Transforming the Walls into Doors. Uh, when I speak corporately, um, the line that I like to use is changing obstacles into opportunities. Now, I'm very well aware to, to share with you as well. I know that there are a billion people going hungry today. I know that this year a million people will commit suicide. It's one every 40 seconds. I know today there are 120 million slaves, and I've met sex slaves, and I've seen the top of the pyramid as far as business and met the billionaires. I've met bankers, and I've also met orphans. We're all looking for something. We're all looking for hope. Hope you can't just have just because you were born with hope. No, we're born with pain. We're born and live through difficulties. And in our life, my parents always taught me that even though we don't know why I was born this way, that we have a choice. Either to be angry for what we don't have or be thankful for what we do have. The power of that choice was the first thing that I had to overcome and decide for myself, especially in the early years of school. A lot of kids would come up to me and tease me. And I've been speaking at five congresses. I've met seven presidents all around the world. My largest crowd was 110,000. I have 30,000 invitations for me to speak. And so wherever I go, I talk about the value of life. I talk about anti-bullying messages for the school systems in different nations. The greatest thing is love. When we feel like we don't have enough love and we don't have enough hope, we start losing strength to live. For me in my life as a child, I had a big wall. I was surrounded by four walls and a low ceiling of opportunity. I was set free in so many different ways and especially surviving from day to day with my parents who loved me, who encouraged me, who told me that I was beautiful the way that I was and not to worry about what other people said about me. I was actually the first special needs child to be integrated into the mainstream education system in Australia and I was awarded Young Citizen of the Year in 1990. And the world is a hurting place and the world needs hope and the world needs love. Without hope, we feel like, why are we here? Well, brokenness. Here's mine. Today, I still have no arms, no legs. But everything's changed. Everything. For me, I was looking for hope and happiness, and I couldn't see it for many years. In fact, if this side of the table represents my hope, truth encourages me to become all that I can be. But then we have lies every day coming in our mind, people who discourage us. You know the people that you have in your life who, no matter how good of a day you're having, they'll bring you down. Or no matter how bad of a day you're having, they'll bring you even lower. You know what I'm talking about? Think of the three biggest discouragers in your life. They're not your biggest discouragers. You are. You are. It only takes three seconds for me to tell you something discouraging. But then you may never forget my words. I've met so many 50-year-old women and 40-year-old women who still remember what their fathers told them that they wish they never heard. Words are powerful. When you hear those words and then your mind starts growing with these lies. Nick, you're not good enough. Nick, just give up. Nick, you're never going to get a job. You won't get married. You can't even hold your wife's hand. What kind of a father are you going to be if you can't even pick up your kids when they're crying? You're alone. 
Sure, your parents hug you, but their hugs can't heal you. Just give up. 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 At age eight, I thought that I should commit suicide. Why? Because I didn't have hope. I thought I didn't have hope. Today, you can see that I had hope. What's the word? Believing in something you do not see. Faith. Words can only do so much. Hugs can do much more than words. But when hugs can't do anything, that's where faith kicks in. For me, words and hugs were not enough, but I had no faith. So I tried to give up. At age 10, I tried to drown myself in 6 inches or 15 centimeters of water in my home. I told my dad I just wanted to relax. But really, I wanted to end my life. I had enough. The first two times I rolled over, I was trying to work out how much air I hold in my lungs before I let it out. And the third time, in my mind, knowing that I wanted to get out of here because of the bullying in my life, because I was going to be a burden to my parents and I had nothing to look forward to, I realized at that moment that if I actually went through with committing suicide, I would leave a greater burden for my parents than they already had. So there was one thing less, sorry, there was one thing um, less hopeful or, or more burdensome than having a child without limbs. What is it? A child without limbs who gives up. So when I saw in my mind my mom and my dad and my brother crying at my grave if I went through with it, that one thought saved me. If my parents never told me that I was beautiful the way that I was, if my parents never told me that I was special and that I was loved, I wouldn't be here today. So I encourage every single parent who tries their best to encourage their teenagers, especially in the West. Many teenagers put a do not disturb sign on their door. I'm sure, you know, the conversations all around the world between a parent and a teenager. How was school? Fine. What did you learn? Nothing. Did you do your homework? No. And that's the conversation for the day. And when you try to tell your children that they're beautiful, so of course I'm beautiful. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. Of course you're going to say that. But they're right. Every single human being has value and my value is not determined on how I look or what job I have or where I'm from, where I was born how much money, all that stuff is nothing. So many teenagers, you know, tease each other for how we look and I tell the teenagers, do you think that I'm cool enough to be your friend? They're like, yeah, of course. I said, but I have no arms, no legs. And they said, doesn't matter. I said, really? So it doesn't matter that I have no arms, no legs? I said, no, it doesn't matter. I said, then actually, if it doesn't matter, then why do we kill each other with our words if it actually doesn't matter? matter why do we look ourselves in the mirror and see ugly instead of valuable I want to ask you today what are you looking for if I gave you a billion dollars would you be happy if you gave me a billion dollars I'd be very happy but then if my mum dies tonight am I happy no with all the money in the world I'll never be happy why right? because money is something that cannot heal the soul. So many teenagers are looking for love, which love does heal the soul. Love does complete the soul. But even sex before marriage, I, am a, I was a virgin before I got married. Yeah, I've, I've got a gorgeous wife. We're pregnant with our first son. And I don't need hands to hold her hand. I, I only want to hold her heart. And, you know, how am I going to hug my kids? So many kids, they come up to me. It's amazing. They put their hands behind their back and hug me with their neck. And I've realized in life, even the worst parts of my life can be turned into good. And they're even more special. So many teenagers, they're looking for love. So they're going to go do this and go do that. You can talk, you can sleep with as many people as you like, but never know for sure, do they love me? Love is a lifelong commitment. You see, there are choices in life. And we're looking, I want to ask you, what are you looking for? And I know that every day my choices will affect this life, other people's life, and my eternal life. You've got to come to the truth of knowing who you are and why you're here. William Barclay, he said, the greatest two days in anyone's life, the day you were born 
and the day you knew why. I was in Southern California and I never met anybody else like me. When I was 10 years old, I wish I would have met somebody like me. Never did, didn't get that miracle. But at 24, in California, I saw a little boy with no arms and no legs, just like me. I knew he was gonna be bullied. I knew he was going to go through depression. I knew he would feel alone. I knew that he would get worried if he's ever going to have a girlfriend and so on and so on. I got the father to bring him up on stage in front of 2,000 people. And everyone was crying. And it was a materialization of when you don't get a miracle, you can be a miracle for someone else. I am not a superhero. I go through ups and downs. So do you. But take one day at a time. And if you haven't found that peace of knowing who you are and why you're here and where you're going when you're not here, for me, I want you to know that's how I've overcome. I hope you are inspired to know that if I can dream big, then so can you. There are no walls. Find your peace and you'll make your walls doors.